Hi there, welcome to Noctis on YouTube. The process of raising a sunken ship has been attempted before in Sweden in 1961. The shipwreck in question had been submerged since August 10, 1628 or approximately three centuries. This impressive feat allowed the Swedish government to turn this 70-meter-long ship into the sole exhibit in a museum in Sweden. The shipwreck was identified as the Vasa, a wooden vessel owned by Sweden which sank due to a strong gust of wind that caused it to tilt and allowed water to enter, leading to its sinking for 333 years. The successful lifting of the Vasa ship in Sweden inspired many to contemplate the resurrection of the Titanic. People realized that the Titanic held a higher commercial value and could be exhibited to a wider audience. However, there were other reasons why many wanted to revive the Titanic. Some of these reasons included preventing theft and avoiding its decomposition. This was because it was believed that the Titanic still contained valuable possessions of its passengers, making them potential targets for theft. Furthermore, decomposition of the ship raised significant concerns. Bacteria that had attached themselves to the ship had been corroding its iron structure for years. Interestingly, these bacteria had never been encountered before, and they were named Halomonas Titanicae after the ship they were consuming. If left unchecked, there might soon be nothing left of this legendary shipwreck. So, can the Titanic be raised from the ocean floor? For those unaware, RMS Titanic was a British superliner measuring 289 meters in length and 28 meters in width, constructed by Harland and Wolf, a heavy industry company based in Northern Ireland. After its completion, the Titanic was operated by the prominent British shipping company White Star Line. Its maiden voyage commenced on April 10, 1912, departing from Southampton and heading for New York. The ship carried not only crew and passengers, but also a variety of cargo, including 39,000 kilograms of meat, 2,400 kilograms of eggs, 1,600 kilograms of onions, 5,350 kilograms of apples, and 800 kilograms of ice cream. Unfortunately, the Titanic's first voyage became its last when it struck an iceberg in the North Atlantic Ocean on April 15, 1912. This collision caused the ship's hull plates on the right side to buckle inward, tearing open five of the 16 watertight compartments. As a result, the ship began taking on water and eventually sank. Additionally, the Titanic lacked enough lifeboats to accommodate all its passengers, as it adhered to outdated maritime safety regulations, having lifeboats for only 1,178 passengers, a third of the total on board. With these limited lifeboats, not everyone could be saved, and the crew followed the protocol of women and children first. In just two hours, the Titanic broke apart and sank with over a thousand people on board. Within minutes, those who perished succumbed to hyperthermia due to the frigid seawater. A total of 1,514 individuals lost their lives in the sinking, with only 710 survivors rescued by the RMS Carpathia. The sinking of the Titanic remains one of the worst and most significant maritime disasters in history. The legendary sinking of the Titanic prompted many to consider raising its wreck to the surface. The initial plan for raising the Titanic originated from the families of wealthy passengers who perished in the disaster, including the families of John Jacob Astor, Benjamin Guggenheim, and George Dunton Widener. These families joined forces to form a consortium and contracted Merritt and Chapman Derrick and Wrecking Company with the goal of raising the Titanic and retrieving their relatives' belongings. However, their plan did not yield results as there was no technology available at the time to lift the shipwreck. 
There was even a suggestion to use dynamite to blow up the shipwreck, which would eject the bodies of passengers and crew who perished. Scientists immediately opposed this method, and the remains were likely destroyed by the underwater pressure and consumed by marine creatures. In 1914, an architect from Denver named Charles Smith proposed a plan to lift the Titanic using electromagnets. This involved locating the sunken ship and using magnets to attach to its steel hull. Additional magnets would be added to gradually lift the ship to the surface with a fleet of barges. Smith also considered attaching balloons to the magnets to aid in floating the ship. However, neither of these schemes materialized due to their impracticality and high cost. Another bizarre idea emerged in the 1960s from a factory worker named Douglas Woolley. He suggested floating the Titanic using gas-filled balloons. Strangely enough, Woolley secured funding for his plan and established the Titanic Salvage Company. Woolley intended to bring the shipwreck to Liverpool, where it could be transformed into a floating museum. However, the scheme was eventually abandoned as no one knew how to fill the balloons with gas at the ocean floor. In the 1970s, another peculiar scheme involved filling the Titanic with 180,000 tons of Vaseline, thousands of ping-pong balls, or pressure-resistant glass balls. The idea was that these objects would provide enough buoyancy to raise the Titanic to the surface. As expected, none of these three schemes were feasible. Filling the ship with tons of Vaseline was comical, and the ping-pong balls would shatter under the deep-sea pressure before reaching the ship's interior. The concept of glass balls for buoyancy was found to be prohibitively expensive, estimated at $240 million. Yet another unique idea came from a transportation contractor from West Midlands named Arthur Hickey. Since the Titanic sank due to an iceberg collision, he proposed encasing the Titanic in icebergs. He planned to freeze the ship with liquid nitrogen, then float it to the surface and tow it to Newfoundland where the ice could be thawed. However, Hickey's idea hit a dead end when he realized he would need to pump half a million tons of liquid nitrogen into the Atlantic Ocean floor to freeze the water around the shipwreck. Moreover, the operation was believed to cost far more than building the Titanic itself. Over the years, many people searched for the Titanic's location and had intentions of raising it to the surface. Various ideas were proposed, ranging from logical to absurd. Nevertheless, at least the answer regarding the Titanic's whereabouts eventually became public. On September 1, 1985, the Titanic wreck was discovered by a French-American expedition at a depth of 3,784 meters. The shipwreck lay 690 kilometers southeast of Newfoundland's coast and was named Titanic Canyon. At the time of its discovery, the ship had split in two and its bow was heavily damaged. Within the ship, remnants of passengers' and crew members' shoes were found, serving as the only evidence of human remains. Since then, numerous expeditions and researchers have explored the sunken Titanic. Some of the remaining artifacts from the ship have been retrieved and displayed in exhibitions worldwide, including Orlando, Las Vegas, London, and Sweden. Among these artifacts are the ship's bells and the big piece, a 15-ton section of the ship's hull. With the successful discovery of the Titanic wreck, the wild ideas about raising the luxurious ship's wreck began to fade. People no longer contemplated how to lift the ship from the ocean floor. Researchers also stated that the ship, submerged for over a century in the deep sea, had experienced increasing fragility and damage each year. The salty seawater and high pressure had been causing the ship to deteriorate. It was even suspected that in the coming years, nothing would remain of it. Therefore, attempting to raise the Titanic was likely to destroy it. Additionally, the operation to lift the Titanic would require an enormous budget, potentially reaching billions of dollars. 
Moreover, there were ethical reasons why the Titanic should remain on the ocean floor. One of these reasons was to honor the victims and their families. Many considered the Titanic sinking location to be a deserving underwater grave that should be respected and preserved. Most archaeologists believe that the Titanic, along with its artifacts, should remain in its place. Taking items from the ship was seen as historical vandalism and could lead to commercial exploitation. To protect the Titanic wreck, several international agreements were made. One of them was the RMS Titanic Maritime Memorial Act, enacted by the United States Congress in 1986. This law addresses the prohibition of moving the ship's wreck from its location. However, the law still permits exploration activities aimed at enhancing public knowledge from scientific, cultural, and historical perspectives. This international agreement was also endorsed by the United Kingdom. This means that no individual, country, or organization can move the Titanic Shrek from the ocean floor for commercial purposes. In April 2012, UNESCO, a United Nations organization, issued a resolution to protect the Titanic Wreck. This resolution ensures that the remaining fragments of the Titanic wreck will now be safeguarded by UNESCO. Similar to the RMS Titanic Maritime Memorial Act, UNESCO directs its 193 member countries to prevent destruction, looting, sale, and dispersion of items found at the site. Considering the various efforts and international agreements in place, it seems that the Titanic's wreck will never be raised to the surface and will remain on the ocean floor indefinitely.